We're here with Don, who has been in charge of keeping everything related to KTM's race bikes going down the road, keeping everything organized, getting everything there, taking care of all the guys now for 10 years, I believe you said, for moto. KTM. Yep, on the KTM moto side, road racing before that for a long yep. time. So for the teams you work for, I believe, um, you know, between the Cowie team, you guys had the unique pop top and the top. Yep. Um, what do you think of the this layout for this moto? Is, uh, this is first class. It's between us and Kawasaki, there's nothing finer in the whole paddock, you know, yep. and, uh, and uh, we design it specifically for what we need, and, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's perfect for what we need, you know, it's beautiful. What's your favorite feature about your trailer? Uh, the trailer, uh, probably the slide out that makes, uh, it opens up the, the work area here. We have one, uh, one mechanic builds a bike back here, and uh, one in the back there. Something that makes motocross, supercross rigs really unique, whether we're talking NASCAR, IndyCar, anything else that uses basically a large feather light trailer like this is, not very many of them have slides. For moto, that is super unique um, for multiple reasons. You need the workspace. If you actually have to build in here on the road, think about, if you're back, if you have cabinets this far inside you, how easy is it to work around the bike? If you're in here doing a fire drill, you're in here pulling stuff out of the drawers, you got other mechanics trying to get by you, suspension guys, everything. These huge slides are super helpful and it's like I said, very unique. You usually only see them on motocross, supercross trucks. Even the most trick NASCAR trailers don't have items like this because it's not necessary for the type of work they do, but for moto, it's hugely beneficial. Also NASCAR, they're parking like three feet, feet apart, apart, you yep. know, in the paddock. So. Yep. They're not allowed to have any yeah. slides, you know, and uh, yeah. that's the way it is. Also, we have another slide in the in the lounge, lounge. so that kind of opens up the yeah. lounge a little more too, you know. Data area, guys can come back in, look at mostly data items such as, I think they still work with Lip Pros, um, all the overlay video, all the ghosted video where they can actually put up riders versus other riders and see how their laps play out. So that's where mostly these guys sit down and learn the most day-to-day and kind of you know diagnose and figure out where the guys can be better. They also can play back a lot of the data on the bike, suspension, um, data from the engines. Oh, and this is wonderfully important. Trailer paperwork, ah, so many stops along the way. By far, at least having worked for a suspension company, this is always my favorite cabinet in any of these trucks. Suspension cabinet. Shocks for every rider. Like I said, we're in between with the new bike launch right now. They don't have some of the equipment on the truck as they're switching out. These are probably the last two leftovers from the uh, old generation for the, bike. For the previous year. Yep. Yeah. But like I said, numbered riders, yep. have enough room for everybody. Plenty of room for forks. Whether it's different setting, damage caused by wreck, it's always nice to have everything extremely accessible and very easy to get to in case of a fire drill or any situation like that i would say also, probably you guys ship we're shipping every week, week. you yep. know two three sets of forks you know it's going to be yep. more this year next year because more riders yeah and same way with engines we're yep. shipping a, a new engine yeah for every rider every week yep um for you guys of course the the drawers are full whether we're talking bolts we're talking linkage parts we're talking everything they need to rebuild the bikes right this at least what it is this is semi last resort right most of the guys yeah. fly if they know they need something every week yeah. they'll fly with it this is day of oh my gosh we don't have this we need to this, fix it but yeah. this isn't grab bag the guys aren't pulling from no. it every week if they don't have no. to no a lot of this stuff has not been restocked yet because we're changing the new hardware bike. Yep. You know, from uh, last year's model to yeah. The next Under year most circumstances, you're full, and that's why, like I said, you right. guys are running actually at the the weight limit at yes. all times. You guys really maximize everything you can in here. Yes. Yes. A lot of times, I'm I'm so heavy that I have to sometimes limit my uh, my fuel, fuel. just to yep. keep the weight down below eighty thousand. You know. Yeah. Because usually I know. Like the first round, when you leave California, mm -hmm. it's loaded to the max, you know that. Yeah. And uh, usually I'll put it on a scale and make sure I, you know, my weight's okay so I know yeah. what it is, you know, and then I can judge whatever I need to yeah. take on or take off. Yeah, know. if you know you're coming near a scale yeah. soon, if you're going to fill up instead of maybe topping off your full yeah. 300 gallons, you'll yeah. go 150 or 200. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. How many miles do you do a year? About 40? About 40,000, 40, yeah. You know, it's it's varied the last few years because of covid you know like one year we do seven races in salt lake city so you're not driving you know 
you mm -hmm. know, to each event, you know, like that. Yeah. So right now, right now about 40,000. And I don't think a lot of people probably realize this, but they probably think, oh, you just drive to the next race. You probably show up with a day off. Like we talked about, there's cleaning, there's grocery bed, there's a lot of truck maintenance, yes. but there are also rounds that are such a far distance that yes. you are at the limit of legal maximum driving. Yes. You are pretty yes. much, you, yes. yeah, how many, you got what, three or four of those a year where you are? Yeah, we go from, uh, from time, correct? you know, up to Seattle, you know, and that's quite a haul there. Yes. And then from there, we, this year, we're gonna go all the way back to St. Louis. Yes. But in the meantime, that's gonna be our weekend off after Seattle. Yes. So we're actually gonna bring the truck back to Calvary. the race shop and yep. uh, restock it and all that. and. Mm -hmm. uh, and then leave for St. Louis after a couple of days after we build the bikes. Heading back for the guys under build days, you've got two uh, solvent tanks, I yeah, believe, here. Two solvent on each tanks. side. Yep. One on each side, yep. Each side. Another one on this side. Yep. Vice need to open into an yep. engine, a part, something underneath. That's just the solvent, solvent drums. Yep. Yep. And once again, love, love having a lot of counter space in one of these. Yeah, and in the back areas, our suspension, suspension area. area, you know, all the yep. parts. Yep. Cartridge holders, yep. Yep. tube holders, everything so it nicely drains yep. and slopes the vice, in. The vice slides out here so we can. Oh, uh, it does. So we can, uh, That's very so we can nice. work there. Yeah. Pressure washer system on this. Of course, the guys are working off the outside of the truck at that point, but you can see it from the inside. It's accessible. Yeah. Uh, what do you got? Three, do you carry got, three pressure washer three systems? Pressure washers, yeah. Three total systems. Yeah. And then you also, of course, use this system to actually wash your own oh, truck every week. DI uh, bottle, yeah. DI bottles. Yeah. How many weeks do you get out of a uh, DI? 10 weeks. 10 weeks? 10 weeks out of the, usually 1,000 gallons. Yeah. And uh, like like next year after Seattle, we'll come back and we'll, uh, yeah. We'll uh, exchange our DI bottles. Is super is the water typically at Supercross isn't a lot of the city rounds aren't as hard as the outdoor rounds. You get better yeah, luck out of yeah. lifespan. Yeah, the outdoor rounds is a lot of a lot of pond water there. You know, it's cool. not very good. So we we carry four engines here. and We'll carry two engines on the bottom. Yep. And usually we'll have a couple in the, in the cases also. Yeah, down here rear le uh, leveling jacks. There's four actually on this trailer. I believe four, correct? Yes. So once again, outdoor rounds, everything's pretty off level. If you actually have to go out and put stands and actually set up the trailer to be leveled, but pain in the butt. So being able to do it by a bun is beautiful. And also good for what trail life spent because it's amazing how many the outdoor rounds as long as this thing is, how much it could sit. It, it, crooked and bind everything. Everything's in a bind, yeah. yeah. So up top on some of the semis are different depending on the team. A lot of people probably seen videos like the new factory Cowie, Yamaha truck, um, the old Geico truck. They had more of like a rider's lounge up top. There was bunks, there was beds, it was maybe a little more comfortable. Um, KTM has much more of a race focus, utilitarian focus. Um, being that Roger Kosferval, this is usually what I've seen on the top of like some of the old Suzuki trucks that he had a hand in is they keep it just real basic with the roll up doors. I mean, there still is just a lot of their spares. So handlebars, bar mounts already ready and everything. These roll-ups are a great place to keep plastics with graphics already on them instead of basically filling up all the bins down below where you need a lot more of your small hard parts. Subframe swing arm kits, the little door back here separates this area from the back where the awning cart is and all the awning materials. You will still see sometimes riders up here. They do have four guys on the team now. They have a hospitality trailer that's very specifically set up, but if the riders wanted to, uh, one of them wanted a little bit of separation, they could come up here and hang out. But for the most part, this is KTM's race truck. So it's very focused on components, serviceability of the bikes, and best maximizing the storage. Um, like I said, by keeping a lot of the excess stuff up here, it just makes it a lot easier for the guys when they're having a fire drill down below to find all the parts they really need and knowing a lot of their bulk items are just gonna be up here. For you, off season, what does it actually look like as a driver? How much maintenance do you end up having to do? Is there things you schedule for upgrades for the trailer? Like how busy, because I mean, during race season, you are gone so much nonstop. How much right. work is there to do off season as a driver? Usually we like to go, this is a Fedlite trailer. We like to go to back to the factory in uh, Cresco, Iowa a couple times a year to get uh, maintenance done, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But this year in Supercross, we won't be able to do that. For outdoors, we'll probably do that for one weekend, you know. And uh, in the off season, there's quite a bit of maintenance, you know. We have to get it serviced and 
you know, a lot of times we'll be putting new tires on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and working on the generator. And uh, there's just quite a bit of upkeep, you know, to keep it looking this good, you know? Yep. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thanks.